couldn't imagine actually using this thing in war. Trying to hit some guy at 150 yards and you think you have a good shot and you miss, and then he hits you. That would suck. <laughs> All right. Anyways. Low and to the right. Here we go. I get two in a row, I'd be so happy. That one felt good. If I can get this last one, I'd be so happy. Who am I kidding? It's a beautiful day, of course I'm happy. <laughs> Alright. Hey, okay, what am I doing? I'm gonna keep trying. So I run out of ammo. Even though I've had it for years and I've fired hundreds of rounds through it, uh, but for whatever reason, uh, when I broke this thing out recently to do some uh, shooting, I, uh, I just could not find my point of aim. But once I did find my point of aim, these 7.62 projectiles were smack and steel out to 200 yards. Smack that steel. So I'm going to make a bold, subjective statement. Out of all of the rifles I own, this Mosin Nagat M44 is my favorite. It just is. I'm attached to this rifle more than any of my other ones, and this would be the very last rifle I'd sell. Um, a technicality of that being that I can have this and an AR-15 pistol, but this would definitely be the last rifle I'd sell. And there's many reasons for that, uh, some of which I probably can't explain very well for sentimental reasons, but I'll try my best. For starters, I just love the uh, character of this gun. Um, this is the rifle of the socialist industrial machine, meaning that it may not look very pretty, but it functions with extreme efficiency. And everything is basically made with simplicity in mind. I just love shooting this thing. Not exactly sure what distance I'm at. Probably about 20 yards, maybe 25. <laughs> Now, back before I even got this one, uh, when I got my M9130, um, I got a crate of ammo. Not a case, let me move this for a second, but a crate of ammo. Like I said, I got this years ago, and <laughs> I've been shooting off this stuff ever since. Um, this crate's really cool, too. You know, it's got some writing up here. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Uh, Ooh, there's some stuff inside which I'll show you in a second, but I kind of want to show you the writing on the case. Um, I'm pretty sure, obviously that says like 762 by 54R, and I'm pretty sure, I'm, I, I forgot, I did figure this out at one point. Um, it's either from 1976 or 1960. I kind of forgot, but it's one of those two. Either way, this stuff is pretty old. 
uh, older than I am, that's for sure. And then I think there's also some writing right there. <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's take a look at what's bouncing around in there. All right, so what's inside is two of these tins of 440 rounds each, so 880 rounds. Um, and it comes with these like packs. You know, I opened this one up. I'm gonna try not to get tetanus here for a second. Oh, so I can just kind of show you. So it comes with these packs of 20 rounds each. And you know, when you open it up, it just kind of it's divided by paper inside and stuff, no big deal. But anyways, it also came with one of these can openers, which I actually did use to open up these tins. Somewhere along the line, I got another can opener. I can't really remember, but these are actually pretty valuable all on their own. Um, but I remember that I think I paid like 160 bucks for this whole entire case right here. And I mean, I think, which came out to like 18 cents around, which was amazing for 762 by 54. I mean, that stuff, you know, you can't even find a crate like this anymore. So just something like this crate is really cool. So. Anyways, let's get this out of here. So there is a lot of firepower behind these rounds right here. Um, the M9130 has a, I think it's like an eight inch longer barrel. So the fireballs that the M44 makes over the 9130 uh, are amazing. So the rifle looks awesome, uh, partly because of this side uh, folding bayonet that you see right here. And that's what actually uh, sets this one apart from the M38, um, which didn't even have a uh, bayonet like this M9130 bayonet right here. Speaking of the bayonet, I don't know if I just got lucky or something, but you know, after you uh, collapse the bayonet, the lockup is perfect. I mean, there is like no wiggle whatsoever right there. It just locks up perfectly to the stock. And uh, I just just really like the fit and finish of it a lot. Um, <laughs> the finish, actually, I screwed up. Uh, I'm gonna take some, some flack for that probably from the purists, but um, I <laughs> thought it would be really cool to stick some uh, limes on the bayonet and see if I could shoot them off. Uh, it was a total fail because when I fired the rounds, uh, the limes didn't even move at all. I think they got like a little burnt on the side, but they're still on the bayonet. And all it did was kind of screw up the bluing, you know, as you can see. But I've been, uh, you know, taking care of it, like rubbing some oil on here so it doesn't build up any rust. But yeah, whoops, my bad. And then one last thing about the bayonet, um, it is sided in with the uh, bayonet extended. So most of the shooting that you'll see uh, is going to be done with the bayonet extended. So another thing that makes this um, subjectively my favorite rifle is the serial number, which is, let's see, it's going to be upside down here, but 314. Let's see. I'll go and turn it this way so you guys can see a little better. But... 314 is the serial number, and it is all matching. Got a 314 on the trigger guard there. Got a 314 on the receiver. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. And then, I think, I can't remember exactly where all the serial numbers are, but I know there's one on the uh, butt plate. Which is right over here. So, yeah, there you go. 314. So, first of all, that seems like a pretty low serial number. And uh, given that this is a 1944 model, which I'll try and show you guys, it says it right there 1944. It's kind of hard to read. 
but given that this is a 1944 model, something tells me that, you know, again, serial number being 314, that this might be a pretty early uh, production model. But also the uh, number 314 is very significant to me, and uh, no, not because of Pi, but something else. Since I love shooting this gun so much, um, I only put one accessory on, which is this recoil pad right here. Um, it extends the length of pole by, what is that, about an inch and a half, something like that, and mitigates much of the recoil. Um, I could shoot this gun all day long with this pad on, and on the top of accessories, uh, this rifle came with all sorts of goodies. Got your mag pouches right here. Came with like a tool kit, which this tool right here is one of the kit, uh, one of the tools in the tool kit. And uh, if you guys don't know, it's a uh, head spacing gauge. Uh, there's a uh, go and no go, I think, for the uh, firing pin right there. This over here is actually really cool. Um, this is the manual, obviously not originally from 1944, but back in 2012 when. I guess it was imported, and I bought it back in 2012, or it might have been 2013 when I bought it, but basically I bought it almost right after it was imported. Um, you know, uh, it, it came with this manual right here, and this whole manual is in Russian. And then uh, another thing that came with, I can't remember exactly, uh, this might have actually come with the uh, M9130 I have, but a cool little uh, screwdriver right there, and then... I'm pretty sure this uh, oil canister came with my M9130, but this one came with the M44, and this one's super cool. Uh, it's, it's actually really clean and shiny and looks kind of like something out of Buck Rogers. All right, so now for the price. I paid about, you know, 10 years ago a whopping 200 bucks for this rifle. Um, and this was $200 10 years ago when everyone was like, why would you spend $200 on a piece of trash like this? Well, I've easily tripled my money. Um, if you can't, if you can even find these anymore, uh, you're not going to find them for less than about 600 bucks with all matching numbers like this one. Oh, and by the way, I kind of forgot to mention, uh, right over here is a, uh, Nagant revolver, the, uh, 1895. Um, but, uh, you know, I just figured since it's kind of in the Mosin family, I'd have it on the table, uh, for this little gun re uh, well, it's not really much of a review, but more of me just telling you why I love this gun so much, but just real quick, uh, just to kind of show you guys, I believe this is a, let's see here, 
Oh, these freaking importation marks. They screw everything up. But right next to the importation marks, uh, 1943. So this is a, ah, uh, you're going to probably kill me if I get this wrong. I should have done my research. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that's the Tula Armory, I think. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure. Uh, what's all the, you know, actually, let's take a, let's take a look at the markings uh, before I forget to do this. So, let's see here. We got up here, that cool Soviet, you know, sickle and hammer right there. Uh, we've got the, the date, 1944, serial number, and then this triangle right here. Um, I, th it's, it, I'm going to butcher the name, but let's go for it. It's Shevsk. <laughs> is that how you say it? I think that's, I think that's what that, that marking is. The Shevsk, <laughs> uh, factory. Uh, let's take a look at some more markings if I can find it maybe here on the stock. So I did notice this right here. Um, I think that means arsenal refinished that square with a uh, line through it. And then another marking right there not exactly sure what that is but you know you got you know like all these awesome imported guns your stupid importation uh markings right there but this is basically just saying let's see here pw arms redmond virginia let's see here m44 762 by 54r and then the uh some sort of a weird it says Russian serial number, but it's definitely like the importation serial number. I don't know. I don't know if I should be showing you guys that, but who cares? I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that care, but I don't really care that much. Uh, you got some more markings down here, you know, serial number, but uh, I think that's pretty much all the markings that I can see. At least the major markings. There's some other little markings here and there, like that thing. It looks like a circle with like a Y or something. But yeah, anyways. And then if you're wondering to uh, back to accessories for a second, um, I forgot to mention I did put sling on here, and this is not an uh, you know authentic like World War II era sling. This is just um, a reproduction. But you know. Still looks pretty good, so can't complain too much about that. Then lastly, uh, the reason that this is my favorite rifle is because of its personal nostalgia. Uh, what I mean by that is this rifle, more than any other rifle I own, represents a time when I was just getting into firearms and I couldn't afford anything nice. Uh, and during this time of like real discovery, I would go out to somewhere in the middle of nowhere uh, sometimes with my buddies, sometimes without, and just shoot all day long. Uh, this rifle truly represents a simpler time for me uh, before I had to grow up and buy things like health insurance and car seats. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I don't have any kids, and I never really grew up. Uh, this M44 is my baby girl, and I love her very much.
Love hitting five out of five. Fifty yards. Let's see if I can hit the damn thing. That's not good. Clearly, I don't know where the point of impact is. I thought I knew. <laughs> you know, still having a pretty good time. Alright, so we're back out here trying uh, 150 yards again. And this time I brought out the big guns. <clears throat> and by big guns, I mean the same gun, but a bigger target. So I'm really hoping that I'll be able to hit this thing. hand back on my shoulder. All right. I was aiming low and to the right. Actually, I wasn't aiming low. I was just aiming a little to the left, or to the right. Felt good. Sick. Alright. I just want to see where I'm hitting. Wow. Both of those shots. Hitting to the right. And I'm aiming right. Elevation's really good. So, <laughs> I guess. I might actually just need to aim dead center. By golly. <laughs> I think I gotta aim dead center. What do you know? This whole time. I I don't know. I can't really explain it. I guess I'm just a lousy shot. <laughs> but at a hundred yards, I know for a fact I had to aim low and to the right. At 150 yards, pretty much have to aim dead center and not to the right. Let's see if we can go five for five.
might have been too high. in it now that is tough to tell but I'm hitting uh, a little bit to the right so actually I don't think I'm hitting to the right I'm hitting a little bit to the right because I was aiming right yeah I'm aiming like pretty much dead center We're hitting them today, boys. Not bad. I hit some of those uh, a little low. So, I think my point of aim is decent. And I kind of want to move it out to 200 yards. Should I move it out to 200 yards? cows are starting to encroach. Hey fellas, what you looking at? You got a little audience here. Yep, right at 200 yards. a little low but otherwise straight at it I guess there goes nothing actually got to raise this up a bit all right 200 yards These rounds smack that steel. Last one. <sighs> All right. So I can't get five out of five at 150, but 
Apparently I have no problem get a fi getting 5 out of 5 at 200. See where my shots are. So it's pretty grainy, but I got four shots, pretty decent, uh, within about a, maybe like a 10 inch group there. And then there's one shot to the bottom right. But all in all, <laughs> I turned around. Oh man, that accuracy, I guess or those shots from the other day because I was having no luck at 150. I just had to figure out where my uh, point of aim was. But yeah, these uh, these rifles are definitely sighted in with this bayonet. Extended. <laughs>